Hello everyone, I'm Bistalia14, and today I'll be reviewing 10 underrated mods for both Fabric and Forge. As usual, I'll be announcing my favorite mod at the end of the video, so make sure to stick around until the end. Alright, that's it, let's get into it. Alright, so the first mod on the list is Chorus Warps. This mod aims to implement a way for teleportation in a balanced and vanilla-friendly manner, and honestly, I think they nailed it. To use the features in this mod, you will need an Enderlink block, and a golden chorus fruit which can be crafted like so. Now all you have to do is to place down the enderlink block and right click on the block with the fruit in order to link it. Chorus fruits will change color once it's linked. After that you can simply just eat the fruit and teleport back to the enderlink block. You can also craft an enchanted golden chorus fruit which will not be consumed after use. Although I think it would be much cooler if the enchanted golden chorus fruit can grant you damage immunity when it's being eaten instead of simply being non-consumable. Overall, it's a really nice, neat little mod that gives you just enough incentive to travel to the end. So the next mod on the list will be Dark Souls. As the name suggests, this mod is based upon the game Dark Souls. This mod adds new armor, weapon, mobs, structures, and even biomes into the game. Honestly, the amount of content added into this game is quite extensive. Not to mention, the texture of some of these mobs are quite good as well. Since this is a relatively new mod, I have high hopes for future updates that may potentially revamp the mob AI and biomes. Personally, I think this mod definitely has the potential to bring Dark Souls into Minecraft. Alright, so the next mod on the list is Chunk Animator Fork. Now, all this mod does is to provide a way to load chunks in a fancier way. If you've been around the modding community for a while now, you might have heard about this mod already because it was really popular back in the day but it stopped updating. But yeah, someone made an updated version and I just thought you guys might want to know. Alright, so the next mod on the list is Elenite Dodge 2. This mod is a successor of Elenite Dodge, which is currently in my mod pack, but the way this mod changes the dodging mechanic is quite interesting. Firstly, when you try to use the dodge mechanic, you see that you have a bar above your foot bar. This bar is kind of like stamina, except the fact that when you try to wear armor, a part of the bar will turn white. This means the more armor you wear, the more likely that you won't be able to use the dodge mechanic. But at the same time, you can try to use potions and enchantments to eliminate this effect. Now when you try to dodge, you will have a brief moment of invincibility. This means if you can do it right, you can actually pull off some sick moves. You can also configure this mod so that you can use the dodge mechanic while you're airborne. This gives you the ability to double jump, I mean, just how cool is that? After that, we have Blocklinks Collections. This mod adds in a type of creature called Blocklinks. These guys can be found simply by traveling to new lands and obtaining the stuff required to craft them. They don't have any functionality, but they are good companions to have around the house. The thing that amazes me the most is how many variations are available for you to find, and they are all nicely textured as well. So yeah, I think it's quite a nice little mod if you get too lonely in your house. Next up, we have Feudal Weaponry. This mod has a new weapons into the game, namely the Longsword, Big Axe, Katana, Lance, Flank Maze, and Pole Hammer. All of these weapons are two-handed, which means the weapon will do significantly less damage if you have something in your offhand. This gives players the choice to play as a high-risk, high-return playstyle. The crafting recipe for these weapons are quite balanced as well, making this a really vanilla-friendly mod that can be added into any mod pack without issue. Alright, after that, we have Soulmate. This mod allows two players to join a relationship simply by giving roses to another. When two players are bonded, they can get a regeneration buff when they're near each other, extinguish each other's flames by left-clicking on them, and get a strength buff when their soulmates get hit. You can also right-click on your partner to teleport him or her back to you. Overall, it's quite a nice mod to have when you're playing on a really dangerous mod pack. The next mod that we have is Hema. This mod gives you the ability to play as a vampire. To get started with this mod, you will need to find vampire blood in dungeons, temples, or you can trade it from a cleric villager. You can then use it to craft a vampire injector and use it on yourself while you have the strength 2 potion to become a vampire. Or if you have the mod Origin installed, you can simply just choose the class vampire. As a vampire, you burn under sunlight, and you can only sleep in daytime. To get stronger, you can start to shift right-click on mobs to suck blood from them. More humanoid creatures such as villagers and pillagers provide good blood source for you to feast on. However, feeding on awake villagers will trigger vampire hunters, who are highly specialized in hunting creatures like you. 
does, I would recommend you to get enough saturation before attempting to fight these hunters, as you will then have access to vampire strength and a short dash that is quite overpowered in my opinion. So yeah, overall it's a really nice mod that gives players a completely different playstyle. After that, we have Magical Lantern. This mod provides a bunch of lanterns into the game that grants different types of benefits to you. To get started, you will first need a lantern codex, which will provide you with all the recipes for the lanterns. You will also need an altar to put all the ingredients inside. So just follow the recipes and put in the ingredients. Lastly, shift right click on the altar with a lantern, and there you have it, a magical lantern. Having this magical style of lantern crafting really makes the process of obtaining one much more immersive. The benefits that you get from these lanterns also makes it worthwhile to actually perform these witch wolves. Okay, so the last mod on the list is Castle Dungeons. This mod adds in one big castle into the game that contains a lot of spawners and a lot of loots. The good thing about this mod is that it's highly customizable. You can customize how big you want it, the type of loot inside the chest, and even themes of the castle spawned. So yeah, again, I think this mod will fit well into any mod pack. Alright, so that's the end. As you might have guessed, my favorite one is Hema. It's just so fun to play as this unbeatable vampire overlord. The execution is really well done, and the fact that they use pillagers as vampire hunters really makes the game much more vanilla friendly. So what about you guys? Which one is your favorite mod? Comment below. Also, like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Alright, that's it. Goodbye.